Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, I want to do a deep dive into finding out what is objectively the worst upgrade in Age of Empires 2. In other words, I'm looking for upgrades that combine a small effect on a unit's stats while also having a high cost. It's not really taking into account all of the real world factors, but just simply which upgrades are giving the worst value. I know you might have a particular upgrade in mind already, but I think there are still going to be a few surprises along the way. Before we jump into the analysis though, I first need to lay out a few assumptions here. First, I'm not going to treat all resources equally. It's not true for all situations, but I'd say gold is generally a bit more valuable than food or wood when it comes to upgrade costs. As an example, the Plumed Archer is the only unique unit whose elite upgrade doesn't cost gold, and I think the general consensus is that's an advantage. Likewise with the Hazar and Halberdier upgrade, their gold cost means you really need to be thinking ahead when it comes to transitioning into a trash war, and get those upgrades before your gold runs out. To try to capture a bit of that, I'm going to make gold worth an extra 50% when calculating the resource cost of an upgrade. I'm also going to be using the latest expansions which have some slight changes to their upgrade costs and introduce some new units and balance changes. I'm also not looking at siege and water units because the attack and pierce armor values don't line up very well with traditional units. The capped ram adding 10 pierce armor for example is arguably less impactful than the paladin's one extra pierce armor over the cavalier. So now that we know what's being included, I have to go make a spreadsheet of all the attack, HP, armor, and range of every unit before and after each upgrade. I'll be right back. Now that all of the upgrades are entered, the subjective part comes in. Really, how do we measure how large of an effect an upgrade is having? I've decided to go with a percentage increase for HP and attack. Looking at the champion upgrade for example, its attack goes from 12 to 13, which is an 8% increase, or 8 points. Its HP increases by 17% over the two-handed swordsman, so again, that's another 17 points. Its melee armor also goes up by 1, which I've decided is worth 15 points. The reason I picked that number is 7 is a pretty standard base attack for melee units, and assuming all of the upgrades are equal, reducing that damage by 1 is roughly the same as a 15% increase in HP. On the other hand, pierce armor increases are worth slightly more with 20 points, as arbalests have 6 attack, so reducing that by 1 is roughly equivalent to 20% more HP. I'm also giving 30 points for an increase of 1 range. Now range is always hard to quantify, but I honestly can't decide if I'd prefer to have Britain plus one range crossbowmen or another civilization's arbalest without that bonus, which would imply I'm at least intuitively valuing an extra range at about 30 points, which feel free to take with a grain of salt. All of that's to say, using the formula and totaling all the changes, we now have a unique score for each upgrade. The one that immediately stands out to me is the Elite Skirmisher, which has the highest point score of the non-unique units. If we expand to include all of those, there are a few notable ones, with the Elite Teutonic Knight, Elite Tarkin, Elite Berserk, and Elite Gebedo all scoring over 100 points. Of course, a big stats boost is usually accompanied with a higher cost, so dividing those scores by the converted cost, multiplied by 100, will tell us how many points you're getting per 100 resources spent. That'll tell us which ones are giving good value for their price, and which are not. To start with the worst, let's look at the bottom three, ignoring unique unit elite upgrades for the moment. The third worst, according to the numbers and the methodology here, is the Paladin. I know it feels like I'm always beating up on them, but I think it reflects how increasingly expensive every little stat increase is as you get later into the game. A great illustration of that is the blacksmith upgrades for example, where each becomes more expensive than the last. It only makes sense that as economies grow, a lot of the quote worst upgrades on a cost basis are going to come in the late game. To compare it to earlier upgrades, the Paladin is like adding two bloodlines, another blast furnace, and half of chain barding armor. You're essentially paying 72% more than the going rate on those earlier techs. Hang on, it gets worse though. The second worst upgrade feels related to me, and that's the Imperial Camel. It's basically 20 HP and two attack, for 1200 food and 600 gold, which again is quite a lot, especially compared to the other techs that provide a similar improvement. 
In the Imperial Camel's case, they don't even have extra attack against cavalry to give some hidden value there. On paper, it's similar to an extra Bloodlines and Blast Furnace tech, which normally add up to a converted cost of 913 resources. That means it's going for about 2.3 times the standard cost of those stats. Again, of course, it's making your camel stronger, but mathematically it makes no sense to prioritize the upgrade if you don't at least have those other techs researched first. The standout is the worst generic upgrade though, which I think a lot of people would have already predicted going into this video, is the Hazar at 500 food and 600 gold. On the surface, it's hard to justify that cost, given on paper it's just a 15 HP increase. That might not be the whole story though, as they also gain a hidden boost of attacking about 5% faster. Factoring that in closes the gap, but it's still the worst. Comparing it to other technologies, it's like 3 quarters of bloodlines and about a third of iron casting. That has a converted cost of roughly 358, so the Hazar upgrade is about 4 times the going rate for that scale of stat increase. Of course, these are just the worst of the non-unique units. There are quite a few of those as well that also have some pretty underwhelming effects compared to their cost. And in fact, 11 of the 15 worst upgrades are actually unique unit elite upgrades. You can see them here with the elite elephant archer technically taking the top spot. Though you could certainly argue the methodology of looking at their HP as a percentage increase is working against them. Elite Chukunu are also right at the bottom, even after factoring in its extra two arrows, which I think definitely has some roots in reality. The upgrade makes them situationally better against high pierce armor targets, but it's generally considered best practice to get all of the other upgrades first before the elite upgrade. For any of the others near the top of the list, it's not that they should never be researched, that's definitely not the point here, but just that you need to make a lot of them to justify the elite upgrade and should prioritize the more generic upgrades first if resources are tight. On a more positive note though, let's take a look at the upgrades with the most value, at least by the standards we're measuring here. By far the best in this analysis is the Men at Arms upgrade. 2 attack and 5 HP sounds pretty modest, but as a percentage of the militia stats, it's a big jump, while costing just 100 food and 40 gold. Comparing it to the cost at the blacksmith for example, it looks like a really good deal. The rest of the highest value upgrades are, as expected, a lot of early upgrades. Again, economies and army sizes are smaller, so upgrades tend to come cheap, and this isn't unexpected. The best of the Imperial Age upgrades though is, maybe surprisingly, the two-handed swordsman. Its 3 attack for 300 food and 100 gold is a downright bargain at that time in the game, with the Elite Teutonic Knight and Elite Tarkin being the best of the unique unit elite upgrades. So what's the big takeaway? Basically it's don't forget your blacksmith upgrades. You do have a blacksmith, don't you? They're not flashy and don't change how the unit looks, but as we've seen they often give more value than specific unit upgrades, especially in the late game. That being said, some unit upgrades are definitely better than others, and the ones highlighted in this video are really the ones you want to make sure you're making a lot of in order to justify that investment. That's all for this one though, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.